Hello everybody, this is Carmichael the Cat, and welcome to your 27th Lua tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over multidimensional tables, and we'll be following uh, pretty much the same format as we did with the last tutorial. We'll first be going over pushing multidimensional tables from C into Lua as function parameters, and then we'll be going over getting a multidimensional table from Lua into C. And we may have to split this into two tutorials, I'm not sure how long it will take, so we'll just have to see. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all the code from the last tutorial. And then we're going to go into our test.lua file and delete our data table as well. And then we're going to create a new function. We'll call it print, not print, uh, print elements. And it will take the parameter t for the table that we're going to give it. And then we will have a for loop, so for i equals 1, uh, we'll give it a size of t, do, and end, and then we'll do that again, because it's a multi-dimensional table, so for j equals 1, the size of t at position i, this is just the standard way to loop through a multi-dimensional table, we've gone over this before, I think, yeah we have, end, and then print t at i j. Actually, we'll say i o dot right t at position i j, and then i o dot right backslash n here. And I'm doing this so that all the values of the first table are, or the first child table within the multidimensional table are printed on one line, and then the values of the next child table are printed on the next because after this loop ends, then we print a new line, so then the next child table will be printed on the next line, and so on. So now to create our multidimensional table, we're going to start by using a new function. We could use the new table function, but I want to introduce this function because it's pretty useful. So, Lua underscore create table. So it's pretty similar to new table, except it takes more than just the Lua state. It also takes an integer argument called nr, and that's the number of array elements this table has. So we're going to give it two. We're going to we're going to say that this parent table has two two child tables, and in this case, array is synonymous with table because we're communicating between Lua and C, so they're the equivalents. And then nrec, I'm not sure exactly what that stands for, but it's the number of non-array arguments, so like numbers, bools, strings, anything besides another table. So we're going to give that zero, because this is our parent table. It's going to hold two... Actually, let's... Uh, in the comment here, I'll show you what the table will be. So t will equal... 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, just do the generic example, and then the second child table will be 4, 5, 6. So it's a simple multidimensional table, but it gets, it does what we need it to do. And I'm not doing any more than two child tables because uh, the code will become a bit long for us, and it'll take a bit long to write, and the tutorial might get a bit lengthy. So this will create our parent table, and the create table is, function is saying that we want to pre-allocate enough space for two arrays to fit inside of it. So this function is useful when you know exactly what, or at least exactly how many elements will be inside of your table. Otherwise, you can just use new table. It will work exactly the same way. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to push a number. So push number, is that anywhere here? No. Push number, and we'll give it 1. So the reason we're doing this is we're going to use the set table function, like we used in the last tutorial, to set the child table to an index in this table. And the first child table will be at index 1 of our parent table, which is this. So we're pushing this number on now so that we don't have to worry about it later. And the stack will, the way that we're going to write this, the stack will still work out so that this will be on position negative 2 of the stack, 
when we're going to use the set table command. So next, we want to create another table. So we call Lua underscore create table again. And this time it's going to be slightly different. We give it zero for the number of array elements, and we're going to give it three for the number of non-array elements. And this is going to be our child table, or the first of the child tables. And this is going to have three numbers in it. It's going to be this table we have in the comment here. So now we are going to push another number, and this will be the index of the index in the child table that our first element will be at. So Lua push number L and one. And then we are going to push another number, and this will be the value. So this will be the key in the child table, and this will be the value. I know this is getting kind of confusing, confusing with all the number pushing. So this is also going to be 1. And now we use Lua set table. And currently this child table that we want to set these values to is at position negative 3 in the stack, so we call Lua set table with negative 3. So right now we have a parent table with at the moment nothing in it but it has space for two array elements and we also have a child table that now has the value 1 at index 1 so now we're just kind of kind of copy and paste this again and change it slightly and we'll do it twice and remember that Lua set table pops these values from the stack once it's done with them so we don't have to worry about manually popping them so now we change both these to 2 and both these to 3 so now, now what we have is our child table with the value 1 at position 1, the value 2 at position 2, and the value 3 at position 3. So as, as you can see here, this matches our uh, child table in the comment. So now we're going to set this child table to be position 1 in this table right here. And also remember that this child table that we've created here is currently at negative one in the stack because all of these values that were pushed have been popped by Lua set table. So we just call Lua set table again. And let's see. Our our key is at negative two yes, our table is at negative one, our key would be at negative two and our parent table that we want to uh, give to Lua set table would be at negative three. So what we've done here, this probably looks kind of confusing, is we are telling Lua set table to find our parent table here and then use negative two in the stack as the key. It just, that's, Lua set table does that by default, remember from the last tutorial. It uses negative two in the stack, which is this number that we pushed here as the key, so the key will be set to 1. And then it uses negative 1 in the stack, which currently is our child table that we created, as the value. So what we've done is we've set the first value in our parent table to this child table. And I know I'm saying parent and child table a lot, but that's what we're working with right now. So now, there's a lot of copying and pasting. We're going to copy all of this and we are going to paste it on the bottom. Let's uh, let's section this off just to make it clear where the split is. And we'll just put a comment here. First child table. So if any of you were skeptical about the use of comments, I know I was when I was learning to program, this is where they become useful. I would never be able to find my place in, with this if I didn't have comments. Second child table. So now we just change this slightly. We are, this new child table will be at index 2 in our parent table. And this stays the same. 
This stays the same. We change this to 4 because we are pushing the values 4, 5, 6 into the second child table. So this will be 4, this will be 5, and this will be 6. So other than that, it stays pretty much exactly the same. So again, remember that Lewis set table pops the uh, key and value pair that it uses. So it will pop when we use set table here. It will pop this number, and it will pop this table. So these no longer exist. So now, currently, our stack is just negative one, which is this. So. Now we actually have to call the function that uses this multidimensional table. So we're going to use Lua, get global. Remember to do it up here, not uh, after we create the table. And I believe our table was, or our function was called print elements. So that's how we get our function. And then down here, we just call it. So we're going to use our safety statement here. So if Lua underscore p call and we give the parameters the Lua state it has one argument zero returns and zero errors or zero error functions it may have an error I haven't tried this yet so if Lua p call does not equal exit success which remember is just uh, it's just a defined for zero then we'll just close the file we don't need to do the printing thing again. If something messes up, we know what happened. So we close Lua. And then I think it's ready. The build succeeds. And, oh wow, worked first try. One, two, three, four, five, six. I expected that I would have a typo. So we've done it. We have created a multi-dimensional table. Took a lot of lines of code. And we have pushed it into the stack and used it as a parameter for our print element function. So that is how you create multidimensional tables in C and get them into Lua. Alright, so we still have time in the tutorial, so we're going to do the opposite of this now. We're going to get this table, which I've already written out. It's the same as uh, the table that we created in C and then pushed into Lua. So just put this table into your Lua program. And it is also the same thing that we have in the comment right here, just rename data instead of T. And then we can delete all the code from here. All the way up to here. So now what we're going to do is the exact opposite of what we just did. We're going to get a multidimensional table from Lua and put it into C. So we're going to get the global table, data. So now we have that table that's pushed onto the stack at negative one. So we have all of this on the stack. And then we're going to get the index one. So that will be uh, this child table that we're getting. So I need Lua. Lua underscore push number. Where is it? Number. Push number. And we're going to push 1 because that's the index we're trying to get. And then we use the get table function from the last video. Get table, give it Lua state, and we give it negative 2 for the index that we want to get because this, when we create this or get this from the Lua program, it's at negative 1. And then pushing the number pushes it down to negative 2. So we're getting data at position 1 with get table. And when we get that, it's the child table. So what this function does is it pushes the child table onto the stack. So now we have another table on the stack of position negative 1. So to get an index from this, we're going to use the exact same code. We're going to get uh, index 1 in the child table. So it'll be equivalent to saying data 1, 1, like that. So we're gonna just going to pretty much copy and paste the exact same code. And not even pretty much, we are going to copy and paste the same code. So now, remember, get table pushes the child table onto the stack. And we're trying to get index 1, so we push the number 1. And then the child table is now at negative 2 on the stack. So we get use get table to get the child table at negative 2. 
at index 1 from the number we pushed. So now we have data at position 1, 1. So now we're just going to say standard count and Lua to number L and negative 1 because uh, get table pushed the data 1, 1 onto the stack at negative 1 and then we'll just end the line. So now the program's complete, so we can run it, and we get 1. And then if we change our index for the child table to 2, we get 2, which is what this is on this, uh, what this is in our table in Lua. And then we can also change the index in the parent table to 2, and then we will get 5, which is data at position 2, 2. It's 5. Then we can just change this again, just to prove that it works. We get 4, which is data at position 2, 1. So this code's a lot simpler than the than creating a multidimensional table and pushing it into Lua. It's a lot shorter and simpler. And you'll probably end up using it a lot more than the opposite, where you create a multidimensional table in C and then push it into Lua. But anyway, that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll probably be going over calling C functions from the Lua library, or from C functions from Lua, but I'm not sure we may do something else. And one more thing, I'm going to be leaving for a vacation for a month starting tomorrow, so this tutorial is pre-recorded, and I'm going to try to get another Lua tutorial to post while I'm there, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I don't know if I'll have enough time. So this may be the only tutorial for probably two or three weeks. But I'll try to get another one out, so hopefully that will be able to happen. And see you in the next video.